Hello, I'm Patty Simpson with Simpson Math. In this video, we're going to do an example of the hypergeometric distribution. So in previous videos, we looked at what made a hypergeometric um, distribution hypergeometric, and we looked at the variables um, and formula of that hypergeometric uh, distribution. In this one, we're just going to do this example. Five police officers and 20 firefighters attend a small conference. All 25 names are placed in a hat, and five names are drawn without replacement. What is the probability three police officers and two firefighters are chosen? So we saw with hypergeometric distributions that we have a population and we're choosing a sample from it. In this case, our population size, or the whole total group, is 25. So our n will be 25. And from that, we will be choosing a sample. Well, all 25 go in the, in the hat, but only five are chosen. So five here is our sample. Then, um, our total number of successes, well, this one's a little bit weird because we have two different ones that we could make. Actually, all of our hypergeometrics could work this way, where we could choose one or the other to be our successes. Here, we could either choose our police officers to be our successes, or we could choose our firefighters to be our successes. In the end, it doesn't actually matter. We'll go ahead and since our police officers are first, we'll use those as our successes, but you firefighters out there just know you're just as much of a success. All right, so our, our total number of successes then are the five police officers. And from those, we are choosing three from those five. Now we're gonna fill in our, um, into our formula now. On the bottom, on the top of our formula, First, we just put in our probability. Our x value goes in here. So in this case, we're looking for three police officers to be chosen. On the denominator of all our um, probabilities, we put the total number of ways. Here, we're going to put the total number of ways that five names could be chosen from the total of 25. So that's what goes on bottom. It's the total number of ways we can choose those five names from our population. On top, we want to draw um, three police officers out of the five police officers that we have. So we have five and we want to choose three. So we're using that combination um, to help us do five, choose three. Then we're choosing five names and we've only um, looked at three of them. So the other two are firefighters. So Five minus three gives me two. I want to choose two firefighters. And then how many total firefighters did I have? Well, 25 minus five gives me the 20 firefighters that I have. So here's the total number of police officers and the police officers I'm choosing from those. The total number of firefighters and the number of firefighters we're choosing. And then this is the population and our, sa our sample that we're choosing out of there. Notice that we could have swapped these two. We could have put the 20 choose two times the five choose three because it, multiplication is commutative. So that's what I mean by you could make your success either one. Now we're gonna work these out. Hopefully you know that combination formula. You're gonna need it. The five factorial over five minus three factorial times three factorial. I'm multiplying that times 20 factorial over 20 minus two factorial. And then don't forget the two factorial out front. Then in the denominator, I have 25 factorial on top and 25 minus five factorial. If I left it like that, that would be the permutation, remember? I've got to stick this five factorial out front so that I have a, um, a combination. Now, I'm just gonna work through this and simplify as I go. So here on the, in the denominator, I'll move over here to the left, see if you can follow from there to here. 
Okay, I'm going to do 5 minus 3 gives me 2 factorial, and then this is 3 factorial. On top, I have 5 factorial, and remember that means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or I can do 5 times 4 times 3 factorial because that 3 factorial means 3 times 2 times 1. This 3 factorial on top and that 3 factorial on bottom are going to become 1. This 2 factorial on bottom really means 2 times 1, just 2. 2 does divide into that 4, so I can simplify that to say this 2 divides into that 4, and it leaves me with a 2. So here on top, I'm just left with 5 times 2. Now that was this first part. Now I'm going to do the next part. I'm going to do 20 factorial. Well, let's start on the bottom. 20 minus 2 gives me 18 factorial. And then here I have 2 factorial. Again, with that 20 factorial, it's 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16, etc., etc. Or I can just stop at this 18 factorial. And this 18 factorial on top and that 18 factorial on bottom become 1. <clears throat> this 2 factorial is really 2 times 1. And 2 times 1 is just 2. 2 goes into 20 10 times. So that I have a 10 there up on top. So I'm left here with, on top, I'm going to have 5 times 2 times 10 times 19 in my um, numerator. 5 times 2 times 10 times 19 in my numerator. Then in my denominator, I have that 25 factorial. Well, let's start in the denominator again. 25 minus 5 gives me 20 factorial. I'm multiplying that times 5 factorial. I'm going to go ahead and write that out. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. On top, I'm going to count down from 25 until I get to this 20. So that I have 25 times 24 times 23 times 22 times 21 times 20 factorial. The two 20 factorials become 1. And now I'm looking for ways to reduce. I know from doing combination that these should all be able to uh, divide into those top numbers. So 5 goes into 25 five times. And then notice that 4 times 3 is 12 times 2 is 24. So what I have left on the bottom here is 24. I can just take that 24, 4 times 3 times 2, that 24 and divide it with the 24 there. So then, notice I have nothing left in the denominator here, but in this denominator, I'm left with 5 times 23 times 22 times 21. In that same spirit of simplifying before we multiply, I'm going to look for, for further things that I can simplify. Notice that there's a 5 on top and a 5 on bottom, so that becomes 1. Also, that 2 divides into that 22 11 times. Now, that's prime, that's prime. 7 times 3, neither one of those has a factor of 7 or 3. So, I've done simplifying. Now, I can just multiply. And I'm left with 10 times 19 is 190. And 23 times 11 times 21 is equal to 5,313. So the probability that exactly three police officers and two firefighters are chosen is 190 over 5,313. So there's an example of our hypergeometric distribution. Math made simple at Simpson Math. Thanks for watching.